This is the day that the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. There's an eeriness over the land as things are transpiring. Uh, things have kicked off since the last time we were in the house of the Lord. But the Lord told us that there will be wars and rumors of wars. There will be famines and earthquakes in diverse places. Amen. And so we've got to uh, continue to put our ear towards heaven. And understand that these things will happen. Hallelujah. So today we're grateful for each of you. Thank God for being saved. And I thank God for being in the process of sanctification. Hallelujah. Filled with the spirit of the Lord. This morning I want to speak to you after we have prayed and read a scripture concerning God's presence, that it protects, it uh, provides, it promotes. Hallelujah. God's presence. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Protects us, it perfects us, and it promotes us. That's, the, that's what I want to talk about today. The protection of his presence, the perfecting of his presence, and how his presence will promote you. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Let us all stand for prayer. You that are on the Zoom call, stop what you're doing. It's time for prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place and in every home. We declare an atmosphere change. Somebody's been going through this week. Somebody's rejoicing. Somebody's blessing the name of the Lord. So we lift our hands to you, Lord. We honor you. We thank you. We praise you. God, you are Father. Hallelujah. Abba Father, as it is in heaven, mm, so let it be in this house today. Your kingdom come, Lord, and your will be done as we glorify your name. Hallelujah. As we lift up the name of Jesus, have mercy on us, Lord. Hey, we bind every spirit that comes to afflict, to hinder, and to trouble God's people. The word will prevail, hallelujah. Hallelujah, the church will prevail, saith the Lord. We thank you now, God. We thank you now, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the name of Jesus, hallelujah, is worthy. He's worthy, saints. He's worthy to be praised, worthy to be glorified. So we've gathered today to say thank you, Lord. Gather today to honor you. Glorify your name. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen, amen. and amen. amen. Look at your neighbor and say, God is blessing right now. Come on, look at somebody else and tell them God is blessing right now. Hallelujah. So go ahead and clap your hands for your blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for your blessing. All right, let's go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1 through 8. I've been feasting all week on the word that was spoken last Sunday, the word that was spoken the Sunday before that, and the Sunday before that, hallelujah, and our Wednesday night studies and Tuesday Bible studies, our Tuesday prayers, hallelujah. You can't beat God giving. For indeed, he is pouring out his presence to us. So I want each one of you to hear the word today. Now, before we read uh, 1 Samuel 30, verse 1 through 8, I want to remind you of something. I asked the Lord on Friday morning, I said, Lord, what do I say to your people? So much is going on. And he said to me, uh, if I tell you, will you say it like I say it? I said, uh, yeah, Lord, but please don't put me out there. Don't, make, don't let me say something ridiculous. And the Lord says, uh, my people are intoxicated with their own concerns. Hallelujah. We've got to remember we're sanctified. You've been born again. You can't go off the world stuff. You serve a king, and that king lives inside of you. He's holy. So I know stuff is going on and you have issues and family with raising children, raising grandchildren, but we're sanctified. Somebody say I'm sanctified. 
I'm serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So we can't get all caught up like the world. Oh, I'm scared. Are uh, they going to bomb New York? They're going to bomb Chicago. And you think God don't know where the bomb's coming? He going to tell you? He'll tell you how to get out the way. Hadn't he taken care of you up until this point? Hallelujah. And he will take care of us the rest of the way. There's no surprise in God. God knew Russia was going to do what they were going to do before time. Let us stay in Christ. In him I live. <laughs> in him I move. And in him I have my existence. There ain't no surprises in God. He knows what he's doing. The scripture. Let's go to the scriptures. Hallelujah. In 1 Samuel chapter 30. Dealing with David. Now it came. Now it happened when David. And his men came to Ziglag. Oh Lord. On the third day. That the Amalekites had invaded the south. And Ziglag. Uh-huh. Attacked Ziglag and burned it with fire. They burned it up y'all. Atlanta was burned down a long time ago. I think around the Civil War time. Verse number two. And had taken captive, what? The women, those who were there, from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. Thank God they didn't kill them. Verse number three. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire. And their wives, their sons, their daughters had been taken captive. What if you come home and the ones you're supposed to see ain't there? That's going to be a bit confusing. My children gone, my grands. Now, I'll be more upset now if my grands are gone than the children. I love my children. <laughs> ain't that right? We love them, but they done had they turn. <laughs> So if I come home and uh, Noah and uh, Robbie are supposed to be there and I find out somebody took them, oh, we're going we gonna to load up. We're we doing something. Come on, y'all. You come home and Jordan ain't there, please. Oh, our mind going to spin. So this is what happened to David. Look at verse 4. Then David and the people who were with him, lifted up their voice and cried. Mm, they thought they may have been dead until they had no power to weep. And David's wife, two wives, Ahin, Ahinoham, the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him. Hmm. Some of those men were like, hey, you the reason. Because the souls of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and daughters. But David, what? Strengthened himself in the Lord. And some virgins say encouraged. Sometimes people don't want to hear your worries. You got to strengthen yourself. Then David said to uh, uh, Abathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring me the ephod here to me. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. And here's the scripture that we want to illuminate today or highlight, bring out. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue, for he shall surely take them and without fail, recover all. You shall overtake them. Now, David didn't ask his men, should we go and try to get the people back? David didn't make a phone call to his dad. They didn't have cell phones in that time. He didn't reach out to the prayer warriors. Mm -mm. Hear me now. He didn't go uh, and call the church mother. Say, hey, I'm in trouble. I got some issues going on with my family and with these men that's helping me to do what I'm supposed to do. David inquired. I'm encouraging you today. 
I'm saying that there's a time to consult with family. Hallelujah. And then there's a time to consult with the almighty God. These times that we're living in, we need to have a pathway. Somebody say pathway into the presence of God. And we're learning that pathway. We're, we're figuring out how to do it. When I quiet myself, when I let the noise come down, and when I, I, I block out everything that's going on with me, God can speak. He refuses to be a part of the foolishness, all these things that's going on. But if you quiet yourself, God will speak to you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, there are some interesting things here uh, in this text, and it's uh, uh, here David is uh, putting on something that belongs to the high priest. David's not a high priest. He's a man on the run from Saul. But he tells, uh, uh, well, what's his name? This guy, young, this young fellow, he tells him, uh, go get me the ephod, Abathar, the priest. Mm-hmm. Ahimelech's son. He says, David says in verse 7, please bring me the ephod here to me. And Abathar brought, now Abathar stole it, y'all. He, that, that, he didn't buy that. He didn't make it. That's for the high priest. Abathar, y'all don't believe me. Uh, let's look at how Abathar took that. Um, I think it's in, um, let me see if I wrote it down. I may not have wrote it down. Uh, look at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 23. Can we put up 1 Samuel 23, verse number 6? Uh-huh. I think. Now it happened when Abathar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David from Saul's. He's fleeting, uh, fleeting from Saul. Uh, that he went with an ephod in his hand. Nobody gave him the right to take that. God uses everything. What belongs to God belongs to God. And God knew before David got in trouble that he's going to need to reach the heavens. Amen, somebody. Now, let me set the foundation before we take off here. David uh, is selected king. Am I right? He selected king because Saul didn't obey God. Mm -hmm. You look at, we don't have time to turn to it, but if you look at 1 Samuel 13, verse 14, God says, I'm going to find a man who will do my will. And he says, this man will be a man after my own heart. Now, nobody told David that. Psalm 13, I'm, I'm going to show you something. The first point I want to show you is that the father prepares. Every father, that the, the father God prepared for the things that you'll go through long before you got here. And we have learned that, right? It says, but now, you, uh, in, in 1 Samuel 13, well, I guess I will read it. But now your kingdom shall, be, shall not continue. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. Look at that. God sought him out. And the Lord has com commanded him to be commanders over his people because you have not kept. Now, this is God talking to Saul. Am I right? I mean, uh, excuse me. He's commenting on Saul, but he's talking to Samuel. And then in uh, uh, 1 Samuel 16 and 1, Samuel loved Saul and was crying about it. Samuel 16 and 1, 1 Samuel. He's crying about it because he wants Saul to be king. But God said, uh-uh. Now, in, in, in 16 and 1, look at Now the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? For your horn, fill your horn with oil, Go, and I am sending you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king from his sons. All that's nice, but nobody told David. When Samuel gets to Jesse's house, Jesse's like, wow, praise God, the Lord has sent a prophet to my house. I know I'm blessed. 
But he didn't bring David out. He brought all his other sons. He, he paraded seven sons before Saul, before Samuel. Said, is this the one going to be king? So the things that God does in your life, he does it without announcing it to you. The anointings, the, the giftings, the, the, the things that you're supposed to do, because David was still out watching the sheep. Come on, y'all, talk to me. So the, 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 the point I'm trying to make to you is that there's conversations going on about you that you're not privy to. God's talking about you right now. Said, oh, uh, uh, this one I've called to do this, and this one I've called to do that, and we have to find out. Hallelujah. So what I'm saying is there's divine conversations going on about your life and then it happens to you and you're supposed to deal with it. But when you have an understanding that God does things before he announces it to you, then you're more comfortable with, oh, okay. Now what I need to do is prepare my heart. God had disqualified Saul let me show you something. Look at uh, Psalms 89. We're, doing, we're dealing with the scriptures today. Amen. And we're trying to tell you that David didn't just all of a sudden put on the ephod and go into the presence of God. He was conditioned for this. He was trained how to do it. God doesn't expect you to do something you don't know how to do. Why do you think we're talking about rest and favor and God's grace, his unusual grace? Because he's preparing you for the words you're going to have to speak to your family and to your community. He's preparing you for another level of living. But you got to get in his presence. Teaching is good. Pastoring is good. You learn things. But the presence of God. Changes your life, changes your perspective. When David was in trouble, he went into the presence of God. Look at Psalm 89, verse 20. Hmm. Psalm 89, verse 20. We'll walk through a few verses. But the, my first point is that the Father has preparation for you. And the second point is that God positions. Hallelujah. He comes and has a, 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 a man of God speak a word into your life. That's your positioning. When, when, when uh, uh, um, Samuel got to Jesse's house and that oil wouldn't flow on nobody. He says, do you have another son? They had to go out in the field. If God's got to go out in the field to find you, he will. If God's got to go to, to, to California to bring you to Georgia, wherever you are to find you and anoint your life, he will. So they brought David and the oil flowed. Now David is anointed king, but where does get David go? Back to the field. He don't even know what, he, nobody told him. My, my auntie, Aunt Dora, her name was Dora Samuel. And when she answered the phone, she didn't answer like you would answer if I called you. If I call you, uh, say, hey, uh, Julie, um, how you doing? You'll say, oh, I'm doing all right. My Aunt Dora didn't do that. She answered in tongues. <laughs> Aunt Dora wasn't normal. <laughs> but I tell you what, on Sunday morning, she could sing a song that drew down the glory of God. The heavens opened when she sang her song. So here now, uh, we're looking at Psalm 89, verse 20. I have found my servant David. With my holy oil, I have anointed him with whom my hand shall be established. Also, my arm shall strengthen him. Not when he was anointed, but later on in his life. The enemy shall not outwit him. You see that? Uh -huh. verse, verse 22, the enemy shall not outwit him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face. And plague those who hate him. So in, in, uh, when they take his, his, his family, his wives and the, 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 the children of the men that were with him, they didn't realize David was a man of God. So you're not fighting against him. You're fighting against God. God has prepared you. He's positioned you. And then this is the part that we have trouble with. This is the part I want to 
just say a few words on. God put, puts forth a process. Before time, the Bible says uh, he, he, he knew Jeremiah and uh, ordained him to be a pro prophet to the nation. God knew David was going to be king before the foundation of the world. He knew David was going to be the person whose lineage the Christ will come in. And so God uh, uh, chose David by anointing him with oil. God uh, eventually had Saul the king bring David into the palace. But none of this was told to David. It all just started happening. And then comes the process. And this is where the saints go nuts the process may be losing a job the process come on hear me now in the holy ghost may be going through a tough divorce the process may be that one of your children get addicted to a drug the process is cruel and hard david was anointed but for 13 to 16 years he ran David even joined the other, the, the, uh, the, the enemy of Israel's army. There was trouble. There's trouble in the process. Hallelujah. I can speak to you confidently because I've been through hell and high water. I've made stupid mistakes. I've been in the wrong place at the wrong time. I've said the wrong thing. I cried, woe is me, at the wrong time. I said, I blamed everybody for what I didn't do, including the white man. Oh, because I'm black in America, I, 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 all that crap. And until I took responsibility, until I understood I'm in a process so that I can be fruitful to God. Hallelujah. Are you fruitful in the presence of God? Are you helping somebody? Or are you caught in your dilemmas, in your problems, in your issues? Hallelujah. God will let you. And then this is the thing about God. He don't promote you because you're too big. You know how a kid is 19 in the first grade. They say, oh, we got to boost him to the second grade. We got to boost him up because he ain't, he's kind of something's wrong. He's still in the first grade and he got on blue jeans like a man. God don't do that. For seven years, he left me in a mess. And I sought him until I found him. That's a long time to be in a mess. Wondering around what's going on. How am I going to make it? What, why did this happen to me? And he kept asking me this question. Now this is, a, this is something I, that's not on the notes, but I'm going to tell you. I'm, sometimes I would get up at 4.30 in the morning. Not by my own alarm clock, but the Holy Spirit will wake me up. And because I was in trouble, I would go out and I would pray. I would walk two miles. My, my, in my neighborhood, the way is shaped. You can walk a complete circle down through the neighborhood, and it's one mile. And I remember I would do this regularly because I was having a pity party. I would tell God, I want this person out of my life. I want this to happen to that person. <laughs> you know how y'all, you got to get under it before you can really be that kind of fool. God ain't doing all that. So I'm out there praying, and uh, then God will bless me in an area and leave that area. He'll bless my finance, like you mentioned, and he'll leave this trouble. Or he'll give me real good health, and he'll leave that thing. Anybody, anybody can it, do I have a witness? That he'll bless you over here, but he'll leave this thing here and just let you. So God asked me a question. He had given me a lot of money. Uh, everything was taken care of. I had a real nice car and I was in good health. He says, is there anything you want? Anything else you want? I'm like, God, are you, do you have amnesia? <laughs> the thing that I've been asking you for. No response. None. I went back, prayed again. He says, is there anything? Well, I said, yeah, Lord. Uh, and I started being current. I said, I want a promotion and I want uh, this thing and I want this kind of thing I want a better landscaping so I just made up stuff nothing finally I got I started learning because he kept asking the question after he had given me something he would say is there anything else that you want and I finally got a clue 
that there is an answer that's right. <laughs> you, you, you know, after a while, you kind of get with the program. And you say, hey, okay. And the answer that God was trying to get me to give him was, I just want you. The things come with God. The, the, things don't bring God. God brings the things. You all know that scripture in <laughs> Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and the things will be added. And my daughter, when she was seven years old, we were in the grocery store. And I should have remembered this earlier while I was out there with my pity party. She says uh, she had a little purse, and, and I was teaching her to you know, how to do and, and all this stuff and trying to teach her about money. So I gave her some money. She gave it to the cashier, got her little items. And then she gave the money back to me, the, the change. And I've told this story before. And so I said, here, Monica, put this in your purse. No, daddy. Like, what you mean? No, you don't talk to me like. So I said, hey, look, put this in your purse. So later, I'm calling myself explaining, you can have different little things and you don't have to ask me for the money. She says, no, daddy, it's a little girl. And so then I changed the tone of my, my voice. You know, in that I thought you, when you child act up, you switch on them. I said, hey, look girl, put that money in your purse right now. She says, no, daddy, I got you. That thing hit my heart. I, I've been telling that everywhere I go. I, I told it in Ghana, in Sierra Leone, all the places I've traveled. She caught something that if she has me, she don't need the purse or the change. And so God kept on working with me, me not knowing that he wanted me to be a pastor. He wanted me to travel to the nations and speak from a purity. And so I finally got it. Hey, Lord. I just want to be able to inquire in your presence. So now the process had come full circle and I understood that I'm not my own. Come on, y'all. I don't own this situation. I don't own, uh, what do you say? Come unto me, all you that, are, that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your soul. I was, I was all over the place in my emotions and in my mind. And God settled that thing, but he didn't leave, take me out of the process until it was worked out. He's not going to let you get out of what you're in if you call by his name. Hello, I know that's not a comforting word, but God will keep you in that pressure point until you get the fullness that you're supposed to get. It's in the process that God helps you become like the father. You know how it says we're made in his image and his likeness, but that doesn't mean we're like him. Because y'all can see that now. Everybody's not like God, but everybody's made in his image and likeness. But you have to become like him. There are some cruel people. There's some cruel people on your job. Amen. And they'll do anything to get promoted uh, before you. I realized that a while back. I was working in corporate America and I was doing well. Then I, uh, you know, we got up to a certain level and things started happening. I'm like, what in the world is this? Because they don't just want a promotion. They want you not to get the promotion. Because if you don't get it, that's one person that's eliminated. Hello, somebody. So things, God has to help us become like him. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, but in his presence. Hey, glory to God. Thank you for your presence. Somebody tell him thank you. Thank you for your presence, Lord. I feel your presence in this room today. Thank you that you have not forgotten about us, Lord God. But every day you're reminding us, thank you, Lord, for this pandemic or whatever that pressed us into your presence. Thank you that the isolation turned to consecration. Thank you, Lord, that we're still here. That you have a purpose, a plan, and a process for our life. And we glorify you in your presence. Thank you, Jesus. It's in this process time, and everyone has a unique time, that God teaches us how to be like him. You're perfected in the process. Hallelujah. So when we look at our primary text, which is 1 Samuel chapter 30, and we get down to 
verse 8, you see that David doesn't turn to the men. But the Bible says, David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and, with, and without fail recover all. This is the year that you come into that place where you recover. This is the year of unusual grace. This is the year for you to be blessed and favored of God. That thing that blocked you when you were 30. That thing that blocked you when you were 35. God has moved it out of the way. Because you shall recover everything that the enemy has tried to steal from you. So I said that God's uh, presence causes us to be protected. Mm. Those men wanted to kill David. Hallelujah. But God protected him. God's presence, yes, gives us guidance, but it also protects. And God's presence also perfects, and God's presence also promotes. So we give thanks and glory to God for all that he's doing and all that he's speaking to us. Hallelujah. Mm, the perfection of the believer also brings forth fruit. There is fruit that God wants to bring out of our life. There's fruit that God wants to give us. There's fruit that we are supposed to bear for our family. It's in the presence of God that we do that. Hallelujah. It's in God's presence that we learn how to be like him. It's in God's presence that we learn his ways. And it's in God's presence that we have the victory. So we glorify God and thank him for all that he's doing and all that he's speaking to us. There is a process that brings forth the glory of God. Mm. And God took David through many things. And he'll also take you through many things. Sometimes we have afflictions in our body. Hallelujah. That we have to press into God for. Medicine don't always heal what we go through. Thank you, Jesus. We've got to trust in God, saints. We've got to lean not to our own understanding, but trust in God. We've got to know that even after God has allowed us to have some issues, that he's able to deliver us from them all. I don't worry about uh, who's trying to uh, uh, um, hurt me anymore. I don't worry about what things hit my body. I think about how to get in the presence of God. How to call upon the name of Jesus. How to travail until I reach heaven. And once I reach heaven, everything is going to be all right. That's why Jesus taught us to pray, thy kingdom, the kingdom that we can't see, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. We've got to stop trying to consult with our girlfriends and our, our, our family and consult with the almighty God. David had got himself into some trouble. He was out fighting other battles, but then his own home was raided. His own family was under, sometimes you can be serving God and your own family is in trouble. You can be preaching, teaching, coming to church, doing the things you're supposed to do, but your own family is the one that needs you the most. Hallelujah. That doesn't mean we, we stop doing what God says, but we've got to be able, hallelujah, to go and reach this one. To go, and I'm constantly praying, Lord, give me how to reach my family. That doesn't mean I negate the people of God that I'm supposed to serve because we got to keep serving y'all. We got to keep being, but we also have to find ourselves praying for those that are in trouble, praying for those that need our help and all of our families, hey, glory, all of our families need the Lord. That's why we're still praying for uh, Tracy and Andrina and Gentry and all the fam each each family is going to have their time to receive prayer because prayer changes things. Prayer causes things to turn around. Prayer causes God to move on our behalf. And the power of prayer is in your consistency. It's not just a hey, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You can't just pray one time, but you got to keep on praying. 
You got to keep on trusting God. You got to know that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avails much. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. And then we went, the, the, what, what we've been preaching and teaching is that the prayers of the saints usher you in. Hallelujah. Into the glory of God. Now, you can't expect the lightnings to flash and the thunder to roll every day, but you can be consistent in it. You can pray until your conditions are better. You can pray until your hands go up. Sometimes I don't feel like praying. Sometimes I don't feel like preaching. Sometimes I don't feel like doing anything concerning God. But I, as I'm consistent in it, that thing will quicken in my body and I'll continue to do it. Amen, somebody. You've got to press past needing a crowd. You've got to press past needing somebody to pat you on the... The Bible says when David was in this trouble, he strengthened himself. He encouraged himself. You all, we have to encourage ourselves. We want something different, but if different doesn't come, we got to keep on going. David's out fighting battles and they call him the mighty man, but then his own family gets taken. Hallelujah. That happens to a lot of us. <laughs> we're serving the Lord. We're doing everything we're supposed to do. We're, we're coming to church. We're praying. We're playing the organ. We're doing, playing the drums, all that. And still we got battles. Still we got things in our life that we want God to have. keep on keeping on, saints. Look at somebody and say, keep on keeping on. Hallelujah. David strengthened himself and encouraged himself in the Lord. Mm. Verse number six. Now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the souls, hallelujah, of all the people was grieved. There are some things that grieve us. Mm. Oh, this isol being, being locked up for two years, that's a grieving Mm, not seeing uh, that one you're praying for get saved. It's a grieving. And sometimes we're grieved by the routines of life. The routine of life grieves us. Doing the same thing in the same way at the same time. But as you lift your hands towards heaven, hallelujah, hey, glory. God has a way of turning your grieving into a blessing. God has a way of turning our hiccups and headaches into a healing mm. in, in Psalm 89 one more verse there and then we'll bring this in Psalm 89 verse 36 says verse 35 once I have sworn to my to by my holiness I will not lie to David his seed shall endure forever his throne as the sun before me it shall be established forever like the moon, even like the faith, faithful witness in the sky. Now God is looking past David and seeing the Christ. Jesus didn't wear an ephod. He didn't have to do all of that because he was continuously in the presence of the Lord. Jesus would say, Lord, I thank you that you hear my voice. I thank you that you hear me, but for these that are around God, hallelujah, bless them that they may hear also. Jesus is that eternal spirit, that eternal uh, 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 forerunner of ours who has gone beyond the veil, who's making preparation for us to be blessed in this life and in the life to come. Jesus is that great rose of Sharon. Jesus is that battle axe. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the one that I'm depending on. Every day that I wake up, I talk to the Lord. I say, God, I'm grateful that you died for me. I'm grateful that you gave your life. I'm grateful that you hung there long enough to save me. I'm grateful, Lord, that you didn't stay in the grave, but on the third day, Hallelujah, Jesus got up. He got up with you in mind that you too will go through things. You, through will, you too will have things that make you feel like you're dead. But God has a way of raising us up. His presence will raise you up. His presence will deliver. And his presence will set free. Hallelujah, give him praise for that. Thank you, Jesus. 
It's not always easy, saints of God, but there is a glory on the other side. David went through there in the scriptures in the 30th chapter of 1 Samuel, but eventually, hallelujah, the presence of God gave him the strength to go after his enemies. Sometimes we got to get off the defensive and go, off, go to the offensive. David began to go towards where he thought those who had taken his family were. But God had a little slave boy to give him some better instructions. <laughs> God will put people in your path that will help you find out where the lost things are. And this little slave boy was left for dead because he got sick. And he began to uh, tell David and the men, uh, the, 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 they're down around the corner there. And if you go down around the corner, you're going to find them. But listen here, this is the interesting part. When David was in the camp and they wanted to kill him, it was 600 of them. Hallelujah. But when David got down by the brook, two of them couldn't go no farther. There's some people in your life that's not going to be able to go with you. There's some people in your life that's going to drop off after a while. But you got to know that you know that you know that the Christ that lives on the inside of you is going to keep your feet moving. It's going to keep your life going forward. You got to know that God's going to do it for you. Thank you, Jesus. He's going to show you how to get your things back. Hallelujah. He's going to show you how to raise your hands in the middle of trouble. Raise your hands in the middle of headaches. Sometimes we get weary. Sometimes we get wounded. And sometimes we get worn. But we got to learn how to raise our hands in the middle of trouble. Say, Lord, if you don't get me out of this one. Come on, somebody. Say, Lord, if you don't get me out of this one, I don't know what I'm going to do. Hey, and once you raise your hands, they're like electric rods. Your hands go up like that and something goes up to heaven. Mm, Jesus, when they was about to take him to the cross, he said, I, I don't, no man takes my life. I lay my life down. If I wanted to, I can call for 10 legions. 10 legions of angels. He only need one angel. 10,000 are ready to help us. For the Bible says, I give my angels charge over you. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. There is nothing too hard for God. There's no problem that you're going through that God doesn't see it. It's part of the process. Hallelujah. Oh my God, who am I preaching to today? It's part of the process to perfect your life. Everything that you're going through, every tear, every cry, every moan, God is perfecting you. God is making you holy. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. God has turned this thing around, y'all. You're already winning, but he got to let you know it. David put on that beautiful ephod. That regalia that has all the tribes written on it, made out of all kind of purple, gold, and all these royal things. You've got the garment of Jesus on your life. Jesus never wore ephod. Jesus never put on a regalia. He just spoke, Lazarus, come forth. He spoke, Talatakumi. I say to Jairus, daughter, arise. He just spoke. And, and brought the dead man back to life that was in the casket. Jesus never put on. You've got it already. Down on the inside. When you get in deep trouble. Oh. Just close your eyes. Get in your private place and say, Lord, remember me. I'm in trouble. Things are going haywire. Things are being taken from me. But I know you'll bless me to recover all. Somebody say, I'm recovering all. Hallelujah, I'm recovering all. Hallelujah, I'm recovering all. The devil thought he had me back in 2020, uh, the 2020s, but I'm in 2022 now. I know how to stretch out my hands. I know how to survive. I know how to make it. 
I know how to be blessed in a weary land. I know how to prevail. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. We're about ready to pray. Thank you, Jesus. God's presence protects. God's presence, hallelujah, speaks for us. God's presence. Father, we speak that your presence be in every home. We speak, Lord, that your presence touch now. Everyone that's connected by Zoom, stretch your hands towards your, whatever you're using to connect. God, let your presence fall. We thank you for an open heaven. Thank you, Lord, that you're encouraging us right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you're strengthening us right now. We will be strong and courageous. We thank you, Father, that your presence, the openness of heaven, is upon ah, there it is. Kadabo Ramanananandasia. Kudia Ra Shukuba Bababasa. Thank you, Lord. That it's in, not in the thunder all the time, it's not in the earthquake, but the still small voice. Thank you, God. Father, we pray, Lord, for Shante. We lift her up before you, God. Whatever the condition is in her body, hmm, we speak to it now. We call you null and void. She shall prevail. Everyone that's going through, Lord, now we pray that your blessing be upon them, that your peace be upon them, that your healing be upon them. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, that one that's tired. Yes, Lord. That one that can't seem to break free. Yes, Lord. One day they're free, the next day they're bound up again. We pray, Lord God, yes, Lord. Mm, in the name of Jesus, yes, that you will move by your power. Yes, thank you for the overcoming. Yes, we thank you for the overcoming. Yes, we thank you for overcoming, Lord. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but we overcome them all. So right now, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise your name. We glorify your name in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hey, thank you, Lord. Let's give God praise. Amen. You may be seated.